Most people believe that the only way to get results is to push harder, grind longer, and rest later. But this mindset is the very reason why so many professionals burn out, stall, and lose momentum. You think rest is wasted time, so you delay it until you collapse. The truth is that your brain is not a battery that drains linearly until it hits zero. It is a dynamic system that can refuel while you work, if you know how to trigger the right switches. Burnout is not caused by working too much. It is caused by working in the wrong rhythm, ignoring the built-in recovery mechanisms that your brain has. And that is why the reverse burnout protocol exists. It transforms recovery from an afterthought into a weapon. It builds micro-rituals directly inside your workflow that turn fatigue into fuel, allowing you to keep a steady pace without ever hitting the wall. Let's start with the science. Your brain operates in cycles of activation and deactivation called ultra dean rhythms. Roughly every 90 minutes, your brain moves from a peak of focus into a trough where energy and attention naturally dip. Most people fight the dip with caffeine, sugar, or sheer force. That is a mistake. When you resist the cycle, you amplify stress hormones and drain your system faster. Instead, you must use the trough strategically. Think of it like an athlete who trains in intervals. They sprint, then recover, then sprint again. That rhythm builds endurance and speed. Your brain works the same way. If you harness the troughs, you come out stronger in the next cycle instead of weaker. This is the foundation of the reverse burnout protocol. Step one is the micro reset. At the first sign of a dip, instead of forcing through it, you trigger a rapid nervous system reset. This takes less than two minutes. Stand up, stretch your arms overhead to expand the rib cage, then take three deep breaths with long exhales. The long exhale activates the parasympathetic nervous system, which lowers stress and clears mental residue. Neuroscience research shows that even a single session of controlled breathing can restore prefrontal cortex function, which is the part of your brain responsible for decision-making and focus. This is not rest in the lazy sense. It is active recovery that reloads your brain's executive circuits in less time than it takes to grab a coffee. Step two is the micro shift. Fatigue often comes not from effort, but from monotony. Your brain gets saturated when you use the same neural circuits for too long. The solution is not to stop working, but to rotate circuits. For example, if you have been writing for an hour, switch for five minutes to a visual task like sketching or organizing notes. If you have been crunching numbers, switch briefly to movement like a short walk or even tidying your space. This shift activates different neural networks, allowing the fatigued circuits to recover while still keeping you in motion. It is like cross-training for your brain. You keep the overall system running while letting the overworked parts recharge. Step three is the micro reward. Motivation is sustained by dopamine, but dopamine is not triggered by effort alone. It is triggered by progress signals. When you ignore progress, your brain perceives endless effort without payoff and shuts down motivation. To reverse this, you must install micro rewards. After completing a slice of work, pause for 30 seconds to acknowledge the win. Say out loud what you finished, check it off, or simply visualize the progress bar moving forward. This tiny ritual spikes dopamine, which not only improves mood, but also enhances energy metabolism in the brain. In practice, it feels like flipping a switch from dragging fatigue into renewed drive. Step four is the microvision reset. Staring at a narrow screen for hours traps your brain in tunnel focus, which fatigues the visual and attentional systems. To reverse this, every 90 minutes you deliberately shift your eyes to a wide field. Step to a window, look into the distance and let your peripheral vision expand for 60 seconds. Research from Stanford shows that widening your visual field reduces stress and lowers cortisol within minutes. This is a simple but powerful way to discharge accumulated tension and prevent the energy crash that usually builds up after hours of narrow focus. Step five is the micro-movement loop. Sedentary work creates hidden fatigue by suppressing blood flow and starving your brain of oxygen. You do not need a workout to fix this. You need a loop of movement embedded inside the work itself. Every 30 minutes, stand up and perform a 30-second pattern. Walk a few steps, stretch your neck, roll your shoulders. The key is consistency. These small loops prevent the slow buildup of physical fatigue that sabotages mental energy later in the day. Over a week, this single adjustment can double your total capacity for sustained focus. These five steps form the core of the reverse burnout protocol. Micro reset, micro shift, micro reward, micro vision reset, and micro movement loop. Together, they rewire your relationship with recovery. You are no longer waiting until the end of the day to collapse on the couch. You are recovering in motion, 
converting dips into accelerators, and building resilience while others are draining themselves. This is why top performers often seem to operate at a steady, almost superhuman pace. They are not superhuman. They are simply running a different protocol. Now let's tie this to performance leaks. Imagine two professionals working side by side. Both start the day strong. By noon, the first one is already fatigued. They push through lunch, drink coffee, scroll for a few minutes, then limp through the afternoon with half focus. The second professional uses the reverse burnout protocol. They reset at the first dip, shift tasks to let circuits recover, collect micro rewards to keep dopamine flowing, reset vision, and keep movement in the loop. By afternoon, they are still sharp while the first one is drained. Multiply that difference by weeks and months, and the second professional outpaces the first not by 10% but by multiples. This is what creates compounding advantage in careers, in business, in any high-stakes field. What most people do not understand is that recovery is not the opposite of productivity. It is part of it. Recovery is not a break from work. It is work. But only if you install it deliberately. Left unmanaged, dips turn into spirals of distraction, procrastination, and fatigue. Managed correctly, they become fuel for a sustainable tempo where output is consistent and energy is renewable. That is the essence of the reverse burnout protocol. It makes recovery your edge, not your weakness. In the second half, I will show you how to stack advanced recovery triggers that train your nervous system to recharge even faster, so every cycle of work produces not just results but a surplus of energy for the next cycle. This is where burnout not only disappears but becomes reversed. Your workday itself becomes the source of your energy. Now let's move into the advanced layer of the reverse burnout protocol. This is where recovery stops being a patch and becomes a compounding force. The first advanced trigger is rhythmic breathing integration. Instead of waiting for fatigue to signal you, you build breathing into the rhythm of your work itself. For example, as you start a focused block, take one cycle of deep nasal inhale, hold briefly, then slow exhale. Repeat this once every 10 to 15 minutes. It only takes a few seconds, but it calibrates the nervous system and keeps stress hormones in balance before they spike. Over time, your brain learns to associate this micro-pattern with calm alertness, creating an automatic recovery loop that runs in parallel with your work. The second trigger is deliberate downshifting. High achievers often run in overdrive all day, which burns out the sympathetic nervous system. Deliberate downshifting means you periodically shift to an almost meditative state without stopping the workflow. You do this by lowering the speed of your actions for 60 seconds. For instance, if you are typing, you slow down your typing deliberately. If you are walking between meetings, you slow the pace. This shift signals safety to the brain and recalibrates energy systems. It is like shifting a car from high gear to low gear to prevent the engine from overheating. The beauty of deliberate downshifting is that it costs no time. You remain active but recover at the same time. The third trigger is emotional discharge. Fatigue is not only physical or cognitive, it is emotional. Carrying frustration, tension, or micro-stressors drains the brain even faster than work itself. To prevent that hidden drain, you need a rapid discharge ritual. The fastest method is expressive micro-writing. Take a blank page and write a single sentence about what is bothering you, then cross it out. This act tells your brain the loop is closed. Studies show that labeling emotions reduces amygdala activation, which calms the stress response. Instead of carrying emotional weight for hours, you drop it in 30 seconds and reclaim that energy for execution. The fourth trigger is circadian alignment. Your brain's ability to recover is linked to your biological clock. When you work against it, every task feels heavier. When you align with it, recovery accelerates. To install this, identify your natural high and low points during the day. Most people peak in focus mid-morning, dip in the afternoon, and recover slightly in the evening. Use the reverse burnout protocol aggressively during dips but go lighter during peaks. This alignment prevents unnecessary recovery costs and makes every micro-ritual more effective. The fifth trigger is reward cycling. Instead of using one type of reward all day, you rotate them. Sometimes it is a micro-break with movement, sometimes a visual reset, sometimes a dopamine hit from checking off a task. This cycling prevents habituation. If you repeat the same reward too often, your brain adapts and the effect diminishes. By cycling, you keep the dopamine system responsive, ensuring every micro-ritual continues to recharge you. Put all these together and the reverse burnout protocol becomes more than just recovery. It becomes momentum engineering. 
You are no longer waiting to collapse and then rebuild. You are constantly reloading while in motion. Your brain learns a new identity. It no longer associates work with depletion. It associates work with energy. That shift alone changes everything. Imagine ending a 12-hour day not destroyed but still alert, still capable of engaging, still creative. That is not a fantasy. It is what happens when you recover as you work. Now let's look at what this means in practice. Most people think they are productive for eight hours, but if you measured sharp high-level output, the reality is closer to two or three hours. The rest is diluted by fatigue, distraction, and false effort. When you install the reverse burnout protocol, those two or three hours expand to six, eight, even 10 hours of high-level output. You do not add time, you multiply the quality of the time you already have. And because your brain is recovering continuously, you are less likely to fall into the spiral of chronic stress, poor sleep, and long-term burnout. You are building sustainability into the core of your performance. This is the difference between amateurs and elite performers. Amateurs think recovery is what happens after work. Elite performers know recovery is what happens during work. That is why they can maintain high output for years, while others burn out after a season. Recovery is not a break from performance. It is part of performance. And the reverse burnout protocol gives you the exact playbook to install it. So here is the system in one continuous flow. You work in focused blocks. At the first dip, you trigger a micro reset with deep breaths and movement. You use micro shifts to rotate circuits, keeping your brain fresh. You collect micro rewards to keep dopamine fueling motivation. You widen your vision to discharge stress. You loop movement every 30 minutes. You layer advanced triggers, rhythmic breathing integration, deliberate downshifting, emotional discharge, circadian alignment, and reward cycling. Every one of these rituals is tiny, but together they transform the tempo of your day. Instead of sprinting, crashing, and crawling, you sustain a steady, powerful pace that compounds over time. Think of it like compounding interest but applied to energy. Small deposits of recovery, repeated consistently, generate exponential returns in focus, execution, and resilience. This is why some people seem tireless while others constantly struggle. The tireless ones are not genetically blessed. They are running the reverse burnout protocol. Now you have a choice. You can keep believing that rest is wasted time and continue running in the boom and bust cycle that drains you. Or you can install the reverse burnout protocol, recover as you work, and build an energy system that sustains high performance for the long game. The difference is not subtle. It is the difference between surviving and dominating. If you are ready to build your arsenal of mental codes that give you an unfair advantage in career, finance, and communication, subscribe to Success Code. Every video delivers another protocol, another system, another piece of the playbook that top performers already use. Install these codes and you will never compete on equal ground again. You will always have the edge. This is the future of productivity, recovery in motion, energy without burnout, and results that never collapse. Subscribe now and let's keep building your arsenal.